Well, we we um, we have shown um, with the results, we are building a strong momentum at Santander uh, with very positive performance in our five global businesses, and uh, thanks to our one transformation program, we have added four and a half million customers in the last uh, 12 months. Customers that are increasingly more loyal to Santander. The number of transactions per customer is up 9% year on year. So we are building a very strong franchise, which means that our revenue are up double digits in the first half relative to last year, with costs very much flat, and the cost to income at 41.6%, which is the best figure in 15 years. Return on equity, like you said, is over 16%, 16.3%. Capital ratio at 15, uh, sorry, at 12.5 percent, and a, a EPS up 19 percent year on year. So we see no uh, justification for trading uh, where we are trading, which is below book value. Hopefully, the market will realize the strength of the momentum and our franchise, and the share price will will reflect this uh, this strong momentum. Yeah, thanks, Jose, for taking that fully on board. That question. Look, here's another one. How frustrated, and a man you know incredibly well, how frustrated are you when ECB's Luis de Guindos said, we'd like to see more cross-border bank, uh, banking M&A transactions because we want to have a single banking market? I, I would imagine that's stunningly frustrating for you to see the politicians and uh, regulators saying, oh, yeah, we, sh we want to see more banking M&A, but not giving you the right foundations for that in terms of creating the cross-border rules. Well, uh, it takes time to develop a single banking market in Europe. We also need a single capital markets uh, mark, uh, in, in Europe. Uh, we need some uh, homogeneous legal frameworks for some products. So I think the, what, what is needed, it's very well known by politicians and the ECB, but it needs to be executed. In the absence of these conditions, it's very difficult that we see significant cross-border M&A transactions in the banking system in Europe. It's, it's really difficult because we will not be able to uh, benefit from economies of scale and scope in the absence of these sort of framework conditions. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, uh, Jose, good morning to you then. Um, I just wanted to talk perhaps about uh, delinquencies. Are, are you worried at all about that sort of getting worse? We're still... Uh, in restrictive territory as well when it comes to these rates and the overall picture as well? Well, the, the key variable to assess the uh, future evolution of asset quality is employment, or unemployment rather. But employment rates are at all-time high in most economies. So as long as labor markets remain strong, asset quality is going to remain strong. In our case, uh, a cost of risk, which is provisions to loans, is very much stable at 1.2% relative to last year. And when we look forward, we see no signs of asset quality deterioration. Again, provided the markets remain where the, the labor markets remains where they are, we see no asset quality pressure going forward.